The scene opens in the motel room 104, and a man, Lewis, walks in and heads straight to the radio to turn it on. Oh, Christmas Tree is playing, and he seems to like that song. He walks back to the bed and sits down with his briefcase next to him, and he closes his eyes to concentrate on something, but a door knock interrupts his slumber. Lewis then shuts off the radio and opens the door, and it's Jean at the door. He invites her in, and she was expecting something more extravagant than a cheap motel room from the devil, and is a bit disappointed that she got this and not a mansion. Lewis had to clarify that it's policy to engage with a client at their personal level, for Jean that seemed a bit insulting. Lewis asks her to have a seat so they can go over the contract that she will be signing soon, and she had to look far and wide to find him, but he does this intentionally so the people who truly want to be here can come to make the deal so the high bar for the entry is necessary. Jean is committed, and she listens to Black Sabbath's album, which is a band from the UK that she likes. The album changed her life, but Lewis has no idea who they are, and she tries to explain thinking the devil would be into heavy metal, but Lewis isn't a fan of contemporary music. She then realizes that most of the good musicians must be in hell too, and Lewis must know them, so she asks if he knows any of them, but sadly he can't discuss other clients. She keeps going, so he had to stop her and make her focus on the deal at hand, and Jean then sits down and tells him that everyone seems to be partying and having a great time, while she gets to just not have any of that. The other girls with the expensive cars, amazing apartments, and hot boyfriends were all making her jealous. They all have that, and she wants it too, and she couldn't understand why she can't have a lot of boyfriends, drive cool cars, and look amazing just like them, just so she can get back at everyone who overlooked her in her life. He knows what she's talking about and he can definitely help her with that, and Jean gets a bit confused because he's not exactly trying to convince her to sell her soul, but that it's not the way he does things and that this has to be 100% her decision. So apparently, this is how it works. Once she makes the decision and she's comfortable with it, Lewis will have her sign the papers and that's it. So he gives her a pen and she immediately flips through the pages to find the signature line, but Lewis stops her because she definitely should read the contract before signing it. He urges her to at least take a look at the last selection, which mentions that Lewis will gain ownership of her soul for eternity, and he asks her again if she's completely comfortable with that, and she seems to not care at all. He was still confused about her not caring, so he asks why she seems so comfortable with giving up her soul. The thing is, Jean actually doesn't believe in a soul or any other religious dogma, especially a Christian one. But the whole setup is centered around that, according to Lewis, and Jean still doesn't care, so he checks one last time, and this would be giving up her soul for eternity, and he tries to scare her by saying that she would be going to hell once her ride on earth is over, but she laughs at his face and dismisses his warning as she eagerly signs the contract to have a lavish, luxury-filled life. Fifty years later, in the same hotel room, Lewis is there again and he goes to the radio and flips through the channels, but he doesn't quite like the music of today, so he just turns it off. And then, there's a familiar knock and he opens the door, and it's Jean, after all these years they've reunited. Jean is now very old, but she still has that smile on her face. So far, she's been really great. She's lived a life full of worldly pleasures, drinks, sex, food, drugs, sport cars, mansions, she's had it all. Needless to say, she's been enjoying every bit of her life, and Lewis is glad that she's doing well, and offers her a drink, but it has to be a quick one because she has a private jet waiting for her at the airport to take her to St. Bart's. She won't be making her flight this time, and Lewis is there to collect on his deal, and this is her day of reckoning. Per her agreement, his company now owns her soul, and he's just here to get what's rightfully his. She won't be going to St. Bart's tonight, and she has another destination, which is hell for eternity. Jean, even after all these years, is still not convinced that this is a serious matter. She wants her lawyer to look at it, but Lewis showed her everything before she signed it all those years ago, but according to her, no one reads the terms and conditions, but it feels like signing away your soul would require some reading. She was trying to dismiss this, but they kept their side of the deal, and now it's time to keep hers. 
She's had 50 long years, and now it's time to pay up for all those pleasureful and amazing years that she spent on Earth. Gene arrogantly says no, and this really pisses him off, and he has to go through this every time, as people have to argue with him instead of actually reading the contracts that they sign. She then asks what he means when he says hell, but to Lewis, that's the obvious part, the one everyone sees in the movies and paintings, and she asks if it's one of those ironic hells like Homer Simpson and the Donuts, but there's really no irony here, and she's going to be stepping into a never-ending torment and endless hellfire and brimstone, and there's really no escaping that. Jean is still not convinced that hell is an actual thing, the way it's depicted in art and media, so she starts mocking hell and heaven. Lewis hasn't been to heaven, but it's pretty much the idea that it's a better place than hell. When she still doesn't buy it, Lewis has no other choice but to show her a preview, and they walk over to the bathroom door, and when he opens it, there it is, a loud and torturous burning misery of hell. This scares her so much that she had to throw up in the trash can, and she finally realizes that she has to go spend an eternity in there, and it would have been nice to tell her that she'll get used to it, but that's never really the case. To her, this might look harsh or unfair, but everyone in hell is there because they deserve it, or they made a deal with the devil like Jean. But Jean was not letting this happen, so she calls her lawyer. Lewis was fed up with this, so he takes her phone, and he's seen thousands of lawyers reading these contracts in thousands of languages, and it always goes the same way, because there's really no loophole, as she's indefinitely sold her soul, and she's going to hell forever. The room becomes bleak as Jean and Lewis sit down on the beds, and he tries to comfort her, telling her that she's had 50 great years, and some people don't even have 50 great minutes. He seems sad with her, but he's not the one having to spend the rest of his life in hell. To Lewis, it's kind of depressing to send all these people to an endless torment and damnation every day, as it's kind of a real bummer for him. Lewis was kind of pissed that humans get all excited and literally sign up their lives for this, but when it's time to pay, they regret it and dive into a life that's even worse than the one they escaped. But Jean didn't have any regrets, said it took her a while to get used to it, but once she did, she couldn't be stopped. Being a sadistic evil person really suits her, and there was a turning point where things became clear to her, and she was dating this man and playing with his emotions, and then she realized that she had a choice. She could be sympathetic, or she could just let go and not care about anything, and she chose the second option and turned off her compassion, so she went out with the guy until she got bored, and then tossed him away. But that was just the beginning, as she did some terrible things after that, and she thought of all people, Lewis would enjoy these stories with him being the devil and all, but it turns out that Lewis is not actually the devil and he just works for him. And when she tries to insinuate if he's a demon or not, he gets really upset because he's more of an executive assistant to the devil. Jean thinks that that's a cool thing and it was cool at first, but after a few thousand years, Lewis is just plain tired of it all and he thought he was cut out for this kind of life, but he has horrible nightmares every night and he couldn't handle this business anymore and he isn't sure how much longer he can deal with it. Jean then tells him to stop if he doesn't like doing it anymore and just say no to the devil. But if he does that, what Jean will experience is a walk in the park compared to what the devil will do to Lewis if he tells him no. But Jean was not giving up, as she thinks there is a way for the both of them to get out of their little predicament here, and she suggests taking over his job, and she could become the devil's assistant, and he could just retire and do whatever it is that he wants to do, like water skiing or something. It's kind of a win-win for the both of them, and he won't be crucified for abandoning his job, and she won't have to spend the rest of eternity in the torment of hell. This kind of intrigues Lewis, but he warns her that she would be directly involved in a large amount of endless suffering for thousands of human beings, and he's not sure she can deal with it. But Jean isn't exactly an average human being, as she's basically been in training her whole life for this, and she goes on with their evil branding quite comfortably. He gets that she's a sociopath, but for something like this, she has to be a whole new level of evil that humans haven't reached before because she can't take the job and then decides she can't handle it because it's going to bounce back on Lewis's face pretty badly. 
Jean is confident and wants to prove herself to him, so she calls out for her assistant Dustin, who was waiting outside the door, and he was just on the phone with the airport about her private jet, but she doesn't care about that now, and she introduces him to Lewis, and things get a bit awkward, and she takes her purse and pours a drink for Dustin, while she tells him about the new deal she just struck with Lewis. Dustin is seemingly happy to help out in any way that he can, and she is glad, and she wants to give Dustin an opportunity to experience something millions of people have been arguing about for thousands of years, like a reward for being a good assistant for all those years. Dustin still has no idea what's going on, but he drinks the scotch, and she directs him toward the bathroom door. She tells him when he opens that door, he'll be absolutely stunned by what he sees on the other side, but before that, she tells him that she's grateful for having him and his patients. She guides him toward the door and he opens it and is immediately greeted by the absolute terrible sight of hell. He's shocked at what he's seeing, but without missing a beat, Jean pushes him inside and locks the door behind him. This seemed like an adequate addition, but Lewis was still not convinced, so she offers him her car, her jets, and everything that she has, including her mansion, and she isn't just doing this to save her life now, she's genuinely excited to damn people to hell as a job. So Lewis had to check with his supervisor first, and the supervisor was surprisingly cool with it, and he warns her about the politics of hell and to watch her back. But just as Lewis was about to walk out, there's a knock on the door, and it's his next appointment that he forgot. But this is Jean's first appointment, and she's very excited to get started, so she opens the door to let the woman in. She introduces herself, and Lewis talks to Beth, and she's a musician, and is here to make sure she's the greatest rock star on the planet. But when she doesn't accept the drink Jean offers, Jean is puzzled with the concept of a non-drinking musician. Beth is all about the music and wants nothing to do with the rest of the stuff associated with the lifestyle. Lewis sits her down and asks her why she wants to do this if it's just about the music, but Jean interrupts him saying that Beth doesn't need to practice because why take the stairs when you can take the elevator? But this particular elevator doesn't go up, it also doesn't back down. Jean tells him to leave because they've already made the deal and it's time for her to make the deal with Beth. Beth tells him she's a very ambitious artist, and with the music business the way it is, it's almost impossible to get noticed. Lewis is still trying to convince her not to do it, but Jean stops him because she and Beth are on the same page, and he's the only one trying to fight this, so he better just leave now. He hands over the contract, but before he leaves, he wants to hear a song. Beth asks him what song, and he tells her, Oh Christmas Tree, and she starts singing beautifully, and he looks at her with a peaceful look in his eye, and Beth sings on, and Jean and Lewis look at her, knowing what waits for her at the end, and here we see the scene ending, and the story is over.